Hey, this is Peter and welcome to another Take a Break with Valley Cat. So we're gonna be working through an aspect that a lot of SOLIDWORKS operators work through and that is working with imported geometry. Yeah, we've done some videos in the past talking about that, but we're gonna be working through the aspect of, hey, here's an imported geometry that's a surface body and we need to convert this over to a solid body and there's, there's a, a circle on there that kind of has some weird edges about it. And we're gonna look at how we can fix that. So go get your favorite cup of coffee or tea as we work through an aspect of how we can convert a imported geometry, surface geometry to a solid geometry. All right, I'll see you in SOLIDWORKS in just a click. Hey there, welcome to SOLIDWORKS. So here's the imported geometry that we want to end up with. And it's got some cool aspects to it. And um, it is a solid body. Now, how do we know this is a imported geometry? And also, how do we know it's solid? Well, one way we can tell is by looking at our design tree. Now, whenever you see a feature in your design tree that says imported one and it shows a little blue cube next to it, that is my cute name of calling it a dumb solid. And, and that's a dead tell way of saying, hey, this is imported geometry. There's no intelligence in your design tree to say, how was this thing made? And I know it's also solid body because of my folder here says solid bodies one on it. Okay, so um, in this video as well, I have provided in the comments down below a link to also open up this parasolid file that we are gonna show in this video. So be sure to take a minute there, download that parasolid, open it up in your SOLIDWORKS system that you have, and now we could try to click along with me. So I'm gonna come up here to the open command, and we'll simply come in, and I got that tab 22 surface to solid XT file, and this is one that I, we have shared with you as well. So simply saying open to that, SOLIDWORKS is gonna come in, it's gonna say, hey, is there a certain uh, uh, template you wanna use? And this one I'll just simply use a part template. All right, so right off the bat, SOLIDWORKS is going to ask you to say, do you want to run import diagnostics on this part? You can say yes to that. And through that, you'll see here that SOLIDWORKS is going to come in and say, hey, um, I see some faulty faces as well as some gaps between faces. So my faulty faces are one, this one up here and that one there. Okay, so looking at this, all right, so we gotta figure out how we can fix that. And then we have some gaps. So we got gaps all the way around, okay. We also have some gaps there. And there's also gaps there as well because that's between this face and that face. So sometimes you can just come in here and just say, hey, I wanna attempt to heal all. So Arx will come in and try to heal it all up, but through that, uh, it tried didn't do a very good job at it. So in this scenario, I'm gonna say cancel to this and then push control Z as in undo. So that ignored the import diagnostics that SOLIDWORKS tried to apply for us. And by the way, when you're importing geometry, it is a good practice to utilize that import diagnostics tool. Okay, and if you notice here under my evaluate tab, I actually have import diagnostics there. Okay, so me as a SOLIDWORKS operator, I'm gonna have to come in here and do my own cleanup on this. So as I look at this here, you know, whenever you see a blue edge around geometry, that's SOLIDWORKS way of saying this is surface geometry and they're not knitted up with each other. For instance, you see here how I have a black edge and a black edge. Those are transitions or a transition between one face to another face and they are knitted up to each other. So as we look at this here, this looks a little different compared to my solid geometry, which I have here. So notice how this one comes over and it stops and it looks like it's uniformed on both sides. This one, it extends down a little bit more. So we gotta come up with a game plan of attack here to make it to where we can get rid of this here. Now, a really simple process here is simply using the delete face command. So I'm gonna come up under my surfaces tab and from here, you'll simply see delete face. Now, we'll use delete face a couple times in this video. Now, with the delete face command, you can either say simply delete, you can also say delete and patch, say delete and fill, and you can also say show preview on it. Now, with the delete and fill, you can also specify tangent fill on there. We'll come back to that in a little bit. So in this scenario, I wanna get rid of these faces here. 
So I don't care about delete and patch or delete and fill. I'd rather just come in and simply delete it. So I'm going to come through, click on these faces like so. And then from there, simply say OK to that. And then you'll see SOLIDWORKS comes in, deletes those set of faces that got added there. And now we can come through and start cleaning it up so that it looks a little bit closer to this geometry here. Now, looking at my geometry, because this is solid, I need to come in and it looks like I need to add a little face here along the side. And that face looks like it's, you know, it looks like it's vertical. Um, and we can verify that. Yeah, there's my front plane. And also looking at this, that looks like it's parallel to that. So coming in here, I don't have that little face. So what we got to do is come in here and we could utilize a swept surface here. So coming in here, let's make sure I got my front plane there, top plane going about there. And we have my right plane coming across on this backside. Hey, that's convenient because I could come in and create a 2D sketch there and we could utilize that for a swept surface. So coming up here, I'm going to activate a sketch on my right plane. And with that sketch, I want to make it so it matches the profile of what we have here. So I'm going to simply come in and uh, click on that edge. If you notice in the status bar right below me, like right, right, right there, notice how it says length and it says quarter of an inch there. That's really cool. SOLIDWORKS will actually tell you the length of an edge as you click on it. All right. The other aspect you could go after is use evaluate, click measure from there, click on your edge and it'll tell you the link there as well. So we're going to use that information to make up my new geometry. So coming up over here, I'm still in a sketch. I'm just pushing control tab, by the way, to switch between uh, the files here in my SOLIDWORKS system. That's a standard Microsoft uh, function, by the way. So coming up here, we're going to come under my sketch tab, activate line command. We'll take this, come down vertical, come over, and then we'll close it up like so. I am not going to worry about this top profile at this time, though. OK, so from here, activate smart dimension, grab that vertical edge, make that so it's quarter of an inch. Sweet. Now, because I'm utilizing the existing geometry that fully defined all my other uh, entities in this simple sketch here, I'll simply say OK. Now, from here, what we're going to utilize is our existing geometry to be our path for our sweep. So come back over here to surfaces. I'll say swept surface from there. And because I had that pre that sketch pre made um, before activating this command, SOLIDWORKS automatically added that as my profile. So now we need to come in and do our path. Now with our path here, you know, this is made up of multiple edges. So if I come in here and click on that alone, SOLIDWORKS will just extend it up to that point. Now, if I come in here and click here, notice that SOLIDWORKS isn't doing anything for me. So. What I actually need to do here is this thing called a selection manager. So right click and I'll say selection manager there, right? Click on that blue cell selection manager. OK. All right. So from here, SOLIDWORKS will allow you to come in and specify how many edges you want. Now, because I clicked on here, these other edges are tangent to my first one. So I get this cool little button here that says tangent propagation. Click on that. SOLIDWORKS will come through and it will find all the tangent edges based off of my very first one. I can simply say OK to that. SOLIDWORKS will treat that as one entity called an open group. And it will take my profile and sweep it along that path. Then from there, simply say OK to that. Awesome. So we're getting a little bit closer, but I am still working with surface geometry here. Yeah, I, I need to make this into solid geometry. And also on top of that, You'll notice here how I don't like I have blue edges here. So how do you get rid of these blue edges when you're working with surface geometry? Well, the command that we want to use next is a command called knit surface. With knit surface, what this will allow you to do is come through and click on different surface bodies that are not connected to each other and merge those entities. So notice I'm just clicking on the main bodies between them. I am. Um, not I'm not collecting that circle at this time. From there, you'll see here that SOLIDWORKS came through and it made these edges black for me. But this one is still blue. And if I notice my surface bodies folder, 
Sonorx says that I have two of them. Okay, so two service buys. We have our imported and we have that surface knit. So I need to get rid of this, this circle here. Now there's a couple ways we could do it. There are de definitely depending on where you do it in your order of attack or your order procedure to come up with your final part. We'll control how you want this to look. Now, if we do this now, what I would need to use is a delete keep body. I will not use delete face. The reason is, is because this is a separate surface body from my other surface body. So if I utilize delete face at this time and I just simply say delete, Sox is going to come in here and say, hey, this is a single face surface body and that cannot be deleted. You need to utilize delete keep body. So if I select that and say, let's delete that body, say OK to this, you'll see that SOLIDWORKS works fills that up nicely or removes it, I should say. So let's say that you did it at this time of your modeling approach. So how can we get rid of, you know, that hole now? I want to fill this in because as I look at my original part, I don't see any edges there or anything. So what can we do here? Well, there's a really cool command that I really like that's called delete hole. And so if we look under surfaces here, you'll simply see delete hole there. Clicking on that, if I come through here to simply click on one of these edges, and yes, this is actually made up of multiple edges on here, but we'll just simply grab that one. So arcs will come through and we'll just remove it for me like that. Pretty awesome, huh? All right, so now we cleared that up. And by the way, as I mentioned, I did the delete body um, before I started knitting this further. If you went the other route, where when we did our knit command and we included this body with it, and we said, hey, let's merge up our entities, what I can do now is that delete face command. Now, if I did it this route and I said, hey, let's delete face, and I click on here, and I simply say delete, like what we did originally when we got rid of those little excess um, leg, basically. Um, I can say delete. I don't really want to do that because if I do that, it's just going to make a void there like we originally had. So we can come back to delete, edit that feature. I'll say delete and patch. Now with delete and patch, I can say show preview on this. And then from there, simply say OK to that. That will actually clean this up for me like that. Not bad, huh? So this approach actually is a little bit better because it only utilizes one feature. If I was to do that delete body and delete hold, that requires two features. So this is where you gotta kind of weigh the odds, like, hey, which route is better? Now, also to come back into that delete face number three, if I did a delete and fill, and I said tangent fill on there, I said show the preview. So Arx will come in and do it, but you'll notice here that kind of does a dip in it. That little dip in there is SOLIDWORKS way of saying, hey, we're creating tangency and based off of this, it will cause a little swoop in there. It's called a G2 connection actually. And we can also see how this looks. Going through our evaluate, we say zebra stripes on there. You can actually see how SOLIDWORKS swoops down on there. It's like, Ugh, sorry, that's not gonna work. So coming back in here, what we wanna do is I'll just simply turn off that and I'm going to simply delete that delete command and we're going to going to roll forward a little bit further. Uh oh, we'll just simply do a control Q. We'll stop and repair this thing. So why is it mad at me now? Well, the reason why it's mad is because of my knit surface. I came in and I added that surface body with it. Now, when I get rid of it, cleaned it up. OK, so so that's why I got a little mad with me there. So coming back in here, I do need to come in and finish up this model. So what we're going to do is come into surfaces again, and I can simply come in and we could say, let's do a planar surface. We could also do a filled surface. But in this scenario, I'll simply say planar surface because I want it to be flat. I'll simply come through and click on all these edges like so and right click. All right. So that's one done. And I'll simply do another planar surface over here. Come through. We'll simply click on all these edges like that right click, done. And then we'll come in and we'll do another knit surface and I'll simply do a window and we'll create solid and merge entities and then say okay to that. And that completed the aspect of moving from a surface geometry into a solid geometry of imported geometry. And some of the cool features that we really pointed on that was that delete hole command 
really powerful to be able to simply come in and remove geometry. We also looked at the aspect between delete body and also delete face. Remember, if you have a separate surface body, you can't use delete face because technically it's a separate body. So you'd have to use that delete keep body command instead. Awesome. So hopefully you enjoyed clicking along with me. Don't forget to download that file. It's really great practice for you to, to get better with imported geometry. So if you are enjoying these videos, please click that thumbs up button. Also click subscribe so you can get notified of future Take a Break videos here at ValleyCAD and other videos that we are posting as well. Have a great rest of the day and make sure you learn something new.